this camera on me? Yes, it's on. That's stupid. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is DSP News, the unreliable ones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the newsroom and welcome to the Gautopia News Network, your unreliable source for DSP News. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever caught a pig red-hooved? Ever? You've caught one today. Oh, and he gonna learn today. He gonna learn today. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with one of our favorites here at GTG Network and Productions. Snorpernell, DSP Gaming, projecting himself when describing YouTube. And I didn't do it. OJ, I didn't do it. But I sent them to do it. Kato Kalen. Ladies and gentlemen, apparently, the YouTube part is just part of the course. You know, we'll, 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 we'll dabble in that when we dabble into it. But ladies and gentlemen, it's the last, it's the second part is the good one. I didn't do it. OJ, I didn't do it. Kato, Kato Kalen did it. I didn't do it. But I sent other people to do it. I didn't do it. R. Kelly, you mess up my life here. I'm fighting for my life. I didn't do it. But I sent them to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, hello. <laughs> Why would you say this, Phil? Why would you say I had nothing to do with that situation, but I, I sent them to do it? Like you, that's a weird flex in the fact that you're trying to, you know, you, you're trying to almost project power. You try to project influence. Now, what is it that we're talking about? It's more likely the Twitch situation. It's possibly has something to do with uh, with the uh, uh, copyright. Well, it wasn't really a copyright strike, I don't think. I guess it was like copyright claimed. Some of, of Tevin's streams, I'm guessing. I don't know. There's been a lot of strange stuff been going around lately, and apparently the pig is feeling special. So we're just going to go ahead and get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are doing well. The news should be back on schedule for a little while. Uh, there is some hangups. A project was taken down. It's very hurtful, so on and so forth. But we're going to work through it. I will either put, I will be able to fix the, I will be able to fix the issue and then I'll re-upload it, which it's, it's currently up, but you know what I mean? I, you know what I mean? Or I'm just going to have to put up a revised version and that segment will just sadly be lost to history. And being that, you know, the, the situation and what the day was and everything, it's almost poetic that it happened that way. So, apparently, uh, someone more powerful than myself was working against me that day. Oh, well, what are you going to do? But, ladies and gentlemen, we're here right now, together. That's all that matters. It's you, me, Snorper now. Let's go ahead and get this going. Ladies and gentlemen, this is DSP News. Always late, never breaking. Unreliable coverage that you can't count on. Oh, yes! A GTG network in production. You guys all know the slogan, I don't smell no bacon cooking yet. So it's time to watch me work. This is how I play the game. That is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone. Warning. What you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. Sound good? All right. That's sounds good to me. My upcoming. Oh boy. <laughs> when those uh, when those wedding uh, when that marriage uh, license is signed, I'm sure it will. Ladies and gentlemen, yet again, we are here with Snorper now, one of our favorites. DSP Gaming, projecting himself when describing YouTube. And I didn't do it, but I sent them to do it. Let's go. Trip to Connecticut, which is now all but confirmed, 100%. It's going to happen. Bleh. Goat laugh. Happened in April. Um, I've been talking with my parents about this. We've been trying to schedule it out and plan it. And keep in mind, they're paying for the whole thing. So it's, it's really more in their hands than mine. It's about their availability, their time frames versus mine. And from everything they've been telling me, it looks like I'm probably going to be going to Connecticut either the second or third week of April. Right now, leaning maybe more towards the third, but maybe the second. It's going to be fun. 
and it's going to be, honestly, um, a little bit taxing because I'm not going to be working that week. You know what I mean? But it's very important because, like I told you guys, my, my parents are not in the best of health, which is why they want me to go out there and see, have cat meet them and everything. Sooner rather than later, just in case. You know what I mean? When you get to a situation in a certain part of your life, you just got to be careful, and they can't fly out here anymore, so I'm going to go out there to see them. All right. A silver-tongued talker, right? All right, so let me cut it. So let's let me paint the scenario for you guys because I've been out of the loop for a little while. Mm. So, mommy and daddy are sick. This is I'm going to try to give you the initial like plan, and then I'm going to give you the revise. So, mommy and daddy are sick, definitely sick, and I have to go out there and see them. Now, it, it would be egregious, and it'd be egregious. And I'm putting myself into into Phil's hooves for just a second. It would be egregious for me to go ahead and fly all the way out there, right? Well, no, it wouldn't because they're my parents and they gave me life and they give me money each month so I can cover my bills and shit. So I should go out there. But I can't go out there because I owe this tax money. I owe like 16, about 16,000, 20,000, 25,000. Ah, the goalpost just keeps getting pushed further and further back. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. I, I'm not sure. I, I know I need to go out there and see them, but I got this tax issue, and I, I really need your guys' help to overcome it. Okay, a couple days later. All right, guys. So uh, you know that vacation that I, I mean, uh, you know that trip to, to see my, my sick parents, my, my sick and dying, possibly dying parents? Um, they're going to cover it. They're going to they're gonna cover the whole trip, everything. They're going to cover the hotel. They're going to get me a rental car. They're going to let us borrow theirs, and uh, they're, they're going to cover all that, okay? But I have to go. You know what I'm saying? I, I initially, I wasn't going to go because I had this tax problem and I, I didn't know how I was going to do it. And that's why I need your guys' support to go ahead and support me so I can pay these, excuse me, appending tax issues from like allegedly three years ago because I wasn't paying this business tax, even though I had what I had my girlfriend, oh, sorry, ex girlfriend, uh, I mean, child slave, going ahead and covering them taxes. I had her, I had, I made sure she was paying her business tax, but I wasn't because, you know, I didn't think that I qualified for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have all heard the story. Then it gets revised slightly yet again. Okay, guys, so I just talked to my parents, and they're going to cover everything because they're they're dying, keyword, dying to meet Kat, right? And, you know, even though I'm in this tax problem, I, even though I have this tax issue, that I, and especially in the fact that I didn't pay taxes at all for 2018, I was collecting money all year. All of 2018, I was collecting money for my taxes, but I didn't pay any taxes at all. In 2018. Yeah, that was the thing. But either way, I'm going to go and see my parents now. Okay, they're, they're dying to meet Kat, right? And despite these tax problems, despite my tax issues and whatnot, I have to go out and see them because this might be the last time I'm going to be able to see them because they're dying. And I need to close the chapter on this part of my life so I can move forward. His words, not mine. <clears throat> His words, not mine. Now, it turns into, hey guys... Or, well, then it was. One more thing. Sorry. We're not done yet. I'm almost there. Then it was like, guys, I got this trip coming up for me and Kat. And it's really good because we really need this. You know what I'm saying? We've I've been going through a lot. Kat's been going through a lot. And, uh, you know, and my, and, yeah, my sick, my sick and dying parents are going to be there, but they're covering everything. No money is coming out of pocket. So all the, all the tips that you're leaving me, the, all those tips, you know, those tips that I keep asking for you guys every day, none of that's going to go at all towards this trip. I'm not even buying my parents a gift because I can't do that because I have taxes. But they're covering the entire trip, everything. And we really need this trip. We really need these, me and Kat really need these four or five days to kind of just relax. I can take her to all my old haunts. I can go ahead and show her where I took my ex-girlfriend there and I ate this pizza over here and I did this over here. It's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. But, you know, mainly it's because we want to... My parents are dying to see Kat one last time. Well, for the first time and the last time. You know, so that, that's really what it's about. But no money is going to be spent on my end. At all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we get to where we're at now. We're going on this trip and whatnot. This vacation to go and so Kat can meet my parents. You know, because, you know, it's best to see them now before they get really, really sick later. You know. And uh, we're not paying anything. My parents are covering all of it. So they get to dictate when I'm going to come out there, when we come out there and everything. And it's uh, it's going to be a drink. It's going to be a great trip. It's going to be an ex. I'm going to have me and Kat are going to have a great time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me. That was a rough summary of the beginning of this whole sick and dying parent situation up till now. Well, up to this point, up to, to this Snort Benel video, like I said, I'm behind, but up to this general point. That's essentially where we're at. The entire timeline, for the most part. 
I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I don't think mommy and daddy's as sick as he says they are. I think something else is afoot. That's just me, though. I'm just, like, I'm just an incredibly cute dog in a sharp suit. <sighs> Can't wait to get my old overlay back. Until then, you guys are going to have to deal with these coffee and biscuits. But yeah, DSP News. Hey, oh, I'm just going to say it one way, and hopefully you'll believe it, even though that's not the truth. And that's literally what's happening here. The guy's a liar. The guy's a fucking blatant liar. And Indeed. Lying to everyone. But people are believing it because they don't know any better. And that's riveting. Genetic Gamer Cheer, he says, I need help growing my Twitch channel. I know your channel has grown over the past few years, so you mind sharing some tips? <laughs> Unbelievable. Quite frankly, um, I don't know what the trending stuff is that everyone's doing on Twitch. Um, what I will say is for me, it's been a more organic and natural growth, becoming a more interactive person, uh, you know, talking with people more on the streams rather than me talking at you. I'm, I'm kind of conversing with you. No. So if anyone actually wants to talk to me, well, hey, let me help you out with this because the <laughs> organic, organic growth. Give those, save those excuses for cat in the bedroom. This is what you do, my dude, to and to to inflate your numbers. Let everybody who comes to your chat ban them, ban them, and then make them make sock accounts so they have to continue to follow the channel. And that's how you build your follower account, bruh. Everybody who comes into your chat, ban them. Don't even give them a reason. You know what I'm saying? Hit them with that low tier god. Get that ass banned. And then make them and make all of them do sock accounts and and then ban them all over again. And the ones who pay you crazy money, those are the ones that you turn into mods. <clears throat> Everybody else though, you keep shitting on them so they keep making sock accounts. So on so your the the follower count that you have on Twitch keeps increasing. Don't worry about subs. It's the followers that you want. That's how you do it. That's how Phil did it. And you do that for years at a time. And that's how you get to we'll see, 68, 60, 69,000 followers. Some shit like that. By the time you guys see this, it'll probably be much larger than that. That's how you do it. Tip for me to you. This game it would be nice. People are talking about Little Pump the Rapper and all kinds of other shit. I have no fucking idea what anyone's talking about. You know, is this a gameplay stream that I like to interact with my viewers? So if anyone wants to like like hang out and talk, I'd appreciate that. Rather than me just playing the game by myself and you guys ignoring me. Or else I don't even know why you're in here. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, you know. It would be nice. Right? Um, that was a big step for me. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like an individual who needs friends. Like friends. Like real friends. Like people that'll be... That can criticize you and you kind of accept it at face value because, well, they're your friends and they know you well. Sounds to me like you need that. Being a content creator on YouTube versus live interactions, it's a very different thing. Um, you know, have a set schedule. Play the games that are popular, but at the same time... Play things that make you happy because if you're forcing yourself to play stuff that you don't like, you're probably not going to be putting out very good streams. That's like me, right? That's like me. You know, just a few tips. I, I, I'm, I'm not really an encyclopedic... But what about playing games that the audience wants you to, to play? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, don't be wrong. As a... I, well, I don't stream. But, like, I would assume as a streamer, you especially if you're someone who does gameplay, you want to have games that people want to see. I get that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know. So you want to pay, play the popular games. You want to play games that maybe you can reminisce upon, especially if you're calling yourself silly-ass shit like the King of Retro, but yet you very rarely play retro games unless they're like been like HD mastered and shit for the current consoles because emulation and stuff is just too complicated. Whatever. But the point is, is um, I can so I can kind of understand playing what you enjoy and playing what's new. But what about just playing what the audience wants instead of doing these stupid ass things like, oh, I'm nervous about playing this game, guys. I'm not sure if people are gonna really like it or gonna support it. Oh, guys, I'm gonna end up playing this game for like the fourth or fifth time because I understand you guys better than you understand yourselves. You're my audience. You know what I'm saying? You guys are fans of me, and I know what's best. And then no one than like barely can get 400 people on stream while there's like four or five dudes on YouTube that are all breaking, you know, past hundred, <laughs> past the hundreds. One is breaking past a thousand restreaming you. I, I, I don't know. I, I could be wrong. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I might've dug in the wrong hole. It's, po it's possible. I, I don't think so though, but it's, it's possible. Uh, you know, source of knowledge on this because uh, like I said, I just do my own thing. I don't pay attention really to a lot of other people do, so... Genetic Gamer cheered again. He says, if you were the boss of YouTube, what changes would you make? 
I've already answered this question many times before. Yeah, let me Chris, go ahead and just tell you what it is. He's going to basically shit on and fire everybody at the top. He's going to basically, he'll basically completely dissolve the infrastructure, put a bunch of people there that are basically like his mods that'll suck him off, and then take care of basically all of the big YouTubers at the very top and put all of it, <laughs> make a bunch of channels, put all of his content on there and make sure that's constantly at the top uh, day in, day out. That's basically how that's going to work. <laughs> that's basically what he's going to do. But nah, here's his explanation though. It's stupid. Very stupid. Simple. The automation has to go. And I know you might say, well, you can't run YouTube without automation. Well, too bad. They created the monster. They're the ones who allowed free and open access to their website to upload whatever the hell you want. And that's their fault. You can't just say, oh, it's, it's not our fault that we're so popular. Yes, it is. It's like opening, a, I've said, made this comparison before. You open a restaurant. The restaurant becomes white hot popular. So instead of instituting standards and safety protocols, you just let as many people into your restaurant as possible. You go wall to wall people trying to eat. Your food quality dips into the shitter. Everyone's eating and getting sick and everything. And then when the inspector comes, you say, oh, it's not our fault that we're this popular, right? No, that's not how real life works. And yet YouTube gets away regularly with violating things like copyright law, with horrendous execution of things like content ID matching, um, a demonetization of videos, and it's all because of bad algorithms that these guys wrote in a hasty way to try to fix the website with all the people using it. They need to hire humans. I hate to say it, Google, the excuses are Okay, over. first things first. Who has the time and the money for any of what he's saying? Okay, Google isn't omnipotent. It doesn't have infinite amounts of money. What you're proposing is absolutely ridiculous. Just because you got a bunch of nut huggers over here on Amazon, over there on Twitch and whatnot that are being paid off, supposedly sexual favors are being given, so on and so forth, all alleged, supposedly alleged, right? Just because that nonsense is going on, on, going on over there at Twitch is one thing. YouTube is so much bigger. You got millions of videos that are uploaded daily. Daily. There's no way anybody you could there's no way you could hire an infrastructure to do all that it's just it's it's preposterous it's absolutely ridiculous is the copyright system and shit kind of out of whack sure it, it sure it is everybody can admit that and at the same time though too phil i'm gonna use you as the base your content is shit it's it's barely enough to get past to get past like fair use essentially like you're very lucky phil as most people, that, like, gameplay footage isn't considered, like, you know what I'm saying, isn't considered something that can be claimed. You're really, really fucking lucky. Because if it was, you wouldn't be able to do what you're doing. Because what you do, Phil, isn't transformative. It never was, to be honest. Hence the reason why you kept riding it out for as long as you did before you went to direct capture. He was, I'm, and I'm only, I'm only surmising this. But what I think is, the reason why he ended up going to direct capture is he was starting to get afraid that what he was doing, those raw uh, Let's Plays or playthroughs or whatever, was starting to become closer and closer to getting hit than he, than he knew. Because around, I can't remember what was going on around that time, but I'm sure there was probably a couple of game publishers out there being like, you know what? We probably should go ahead and get a cut of all this because there's way too much free money out there and fuck the... The advertising, you know, the, the free advertising, we need to get a piece of that. Kind of like what Nintendo tried to do. And I think he went ahead and went to direct capture to kind of offset that a little bit. Like, oh, let me go ahead and put my ugly mug up here, and there you go. And, you know, you see that the, the sound quality and the visuals are better too, so, you know, that makes it transformative, right? Instead of me just gorilla camming, uh, gorilla camming it the whole time. But that's just one thing of many reasons on why he may have done it. Yeah, this is why Phil isn't ahead of a business. We've seen this man screw up a YouTube channel. We see him tanking a Twitch. Well, he's screwed up multiple YouTube channels. He's screwed up multiple YouTube channels. He's tanking a Twitch. He's been basically abused. And it's, <laughs> it's kind of hilarious to say that. But he's basically been abused by every MCN that's ever been with him. Like, you don't go into business with somebody like this. And you, don't, you certainly don't let him run a business. You don't. It's just... It's stupid. It's just plain out stupid. It's preposterous. I wouldn't put him... I wouldn't let him run a lemonade stand, let alone would I let him run a multi-billion dollar company. 
it's just is no hell no the guy can barely manage his relationship the guy can barely manage playing games on a weekly basis you want to put this guy out of a corporation no hell no hell no google was rolling in fucking money and could afford to hire humans to work at these places they just don't want to it's not that oh you know we uh you know, we, we can't do it. No, they just don't want to. They want to try to lower their bottom line as much as possible. You know, lower their operating costs while trying to rake in profits. In fact, recently it's actually come out. This is the truth, guys. You may not know this. It's been leaked that Google management is doing everything they can to stop their employees from organizing a union. Because apparently Google employees recently have felt like they're being mistreated. And they wanted to form a union against the management. And the management is trying to basically stop them. To having these 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 rights there's um, been plenty of corporations that have done that and do you have like and you said that this has been leaked do you actually have the article that says that i'm just saying i'm just i'm just asking if you have it that'd be cool you could at least you know you could have dropped the link in the chat or something since you are using what would be considered a prehistoric type of chat you, i'm sure you could drop a link in there you know or something just saying if not you could direct them somewhere Maybe to the Twitter article, maybe to the Twitter thread that you actually saw it on. Just saying, you know, link them to a tweet. Be helpful. Eh. That's awful. And what that tells me is that they don't see their employees as valuable, uh, you know, uh, people. They just see them as a number on a spreadsheet, which makes sense because guess what? That's how their whole fucking business is run with automation and numbers in a, in a numbers in an algorithm, numbers on a spreadsheet, numbers in a results page. They don't actually care about the human side of anything they do on YouTube. So it makes sense that they would treat their employees the same way. All right, let me ask you a question. Let's talk about the human side of Twitch. Uh, how do you feel about Swaggins? I'm just saying. I understand how, you know, you, you feel about Sidella, hence the reason why you keep protecting him even though officially he's off the site, but let's be honest, he's running around on, he's he's going ahead and wheelchairing himself from sock account to sock account and whatnot. And that, you know, I, as you know here, I'm a, I'm a big, we're a big fan of uh, MILF and cookies over here. So, you know, I, I get why you, you, you have a soft spot for Seidel. But uh, what about Swaggins? I mean, Swaggins gets bitched up all the time. And he gives you money on a semi-regular basis. He's been around for a very long time. He is on the all-time leaderboard. I mean, where's the human aspect of that? Why does he get smacked down for whatever new face that throws 20 bucks up at any given time? I'm just saying, not that I'm trying to protect Swaggers or anything, fuck Swaggers, but I'm just saying, I just, you know, under reasonable circumstances, I thought I'd go ahead and, you know, throw an alley-oop out there just to see if he catches it. No? No answer? Eh, well, fuck Swaggers. You know what I mean? Um... So that being said, you know, the first thing I would do is say enough of this corporate culture of bullshit, of a nonsense, of mistreating our people, of running our website like a robot, and it's time to go back to basics. Let's make YouTube a place where people can come and put up their content and feel like, like it's a place where if you don't have big production budget or value, that you can still showcase your talent. We're going to delete all the- I don't want to sound like a jerk when I say this, but theoretically, haven't you already come on YouTube? I'm sorry, that was in poor taste, my bad. Algorithm. Rhythms that make these dumb fuck drama posters and people who do stupid uh, rumor videos and prank videos and all this trash content, we're gonna push that to the bottom of the fucking barrel where it belongs. <gasps> oh my god! And we're gonna try Even to if you did that, that doesn't that doesn't completely cause the content to die out because what makes it popular is the fact that people watch it. Like that kind of explains why you're where you're you're at where you're at, Phil. You're not entertaining, so people don't want you. Or the people who do watch you, I should say, are just the kind of same. It's just the, you know, this the the regulars that pop up. It's kind of like, Phil, since you want to use, like, you know, that restaurant analogy. It's kind of like having that shitty diner that's on the corner that everybody knows that it's shit. But some of those people have been going there for, like, 10, 15, 20 years. And they're okay with it. Like, luckily, their stomachs have mutated to be able to, like, deal with the harsh food and whatnot. So they don't mind it. You know what I'm saying? And maybe sometimes it's not even because of the food, it's because of the uh, the atmosphere or whatnot. Let me give you an example. So, <laughs> let me give you an example. All right, so, I was in, I don't know, I think I was in, like, South Carolina or some shit. I can't remember. I don't know, wait, it was, I was, I don't know. It was, like, let's say I was in South Carolina. I was in South Carolina, right? And it was, like, me and two other dudes that I was working with or whatnot. And we stopped by this one diner, which was really nice, actually. It was, a, it was actually pretty cool. And uh, there was another diner that was literally 
and I like literally you could see it like from where we were sitting in the diner looking out directly this big ass plate window um you could see this other diner that looked like this rundown piece of shit like it, it literally looked like a trap house with a giant coffee logo that was peeling off like the whole building looked like it should have been like closed off <laughs> it certainly wasn't up to code but people but all these older people were kept coming in and out so one of the people that I was with asked, I was like, hey, are they like renovating that? Is that place still open or what's the deal with that? And she was like, nah, it's been, our waitress was like, nah, it's been there for like 40 years or whatever and people just keep going there. And I was like, but it doesn't look, it doesn't look like very good. And she's like, eh, people like what they like. And I was like, okay. So anyway, we ended up eating or whatever and we head back to the car and I was like, yo, swing by there because I want to I wanna just step in there real fast. I just want to see what the deal is. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it looks shitty on the outside, but maybe the inside is kind of like, it looks really nice and shit. So we head by. <laughs> and we immediately get uh, get pulled up up front. And they're like, nah, we're not walking in there. Fuck all that, man. You're on your own. I was like, all right, then. You know what I'm saying? If I'm the only one with balls, whatever. So I walk in, push this door open, which had this absolutely annoying crackling sound. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like some shit like you fucking hear in a scary movie or whatnot. And... It has that, like, that annoying ding, like, type of bell that's at the top and shit. And uh, I push this damn thing open. And it's like you, it's like any other diner. Everybody turns around and looks to see who comes in. And it's all old folks. You know what I'm saying? It's all old folks in there. You know what I'm saying? A couple truck drivers, a couple old older couples and shit like that. The floors, I initially thought they were brown. <laughs> I, I initially thought they were, like, a marbled brown. And whatnot. I'll explain that on my way out. And uh, I walk up to the counter and I'm like, uh, yeah, what do you have good that's here? And this uh, old lady cigar in her, or not, it was a cigar. It was a real, it was a cigar that was in this woman's mouth. It was like, everything's good. I'm like, got a menu? And they're like, we don't need menus here. I was like, fuck you mean you don't need menus here? And they're like, because we know what's good. So we just order what we want. You know what I'm saying? We've been here a long time. I was like, okay, so what do you do for people who don't, who aren't like, aren't new to the area? You know what I'm saying? Or who aren't, are new to the area and aren't used to coming in here? And I was like, most new, <laughs> but we, we don't get a lot of visitors in here. I'm like, okay. Can I get a cup of coffee to go? She was like, okay. And uh, I was like, can I get like, uh, you guys got like sugar and cream? And she's like, we have milk. And I'm looking and I'm thinking, that milk that's been sitting on the counter since I walked in here? And I'm <laughs> I was like, uh, you got cream? Like, just, just, do you have creamer of some type? Like, do you even have the powdered shit? And this guy was like, they make powdered cream? I was like, ha! <laughs> I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. I was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll, I'll take a cup of coffee with just heavy sugar. We're straight. All right, so she puts it into this, like, this styrofoam comp. Looks like something Lil Wayne usually drinks out of and shit. <laughs> she gave me one of these glass jars for the sugar and just put it right in front of me and she's like it's self-serve and I was like but you already served the coffee you won't put sugar in for me alright anyway I'm sorry I'm being a dick after like five minutes I ended up paying like the I don't know it only cost like a buck maybe if, if it was even that I don't know and the cup was like maybe 16 ounces I don't know and I walk out now this is the thing that's funny so remember how I said that I thought the floors were brown and it had like a marble type thing to it? They weren't brown. I saw my footprints when I turned around to walk out. Like perfect footprints from the time I walked through the door to where I got to at the counter. And I was like, oh no, I made such a terrible mistake. Anyway, I'm getting to the car and end up leaving. So they're like, well, are you going to drink the coffee? And I was like, no, pull over and I'll show you why. <laughs> window and I went and took the top off and I just poured the coffee out and it was literally like sludge like that was like it's very obvious that because I know old coffee and anybody knows old coffee when you smell it it's very obvious that they were reusing the filter over and over and over again so basically they just put new coffee grounds onto the old ones to the point where it basically came out like sludge and I was like that's why toss that shit and we drove off interesting antidote now that would be the type of situation Phil would run. That's how Phil, that's how a business kind of gets fucked up. When you have a bunch of people who just don't care after a certain amount of time. You know what I'm saying? So, putting Phil, <laughs> putting, 
putting Phil at the head of anything is a bad idea. And I've just kind of explained to you why. So there you go. That's one of the joys of being able to travel when you work. I like actual people with talent. But the thing is, that takes humans yes, to look and judge and watch. Not robots. You know what I mean? Because when you have, when you leave it to the masses to determine what's popular, I hate to say it, you get things like reality TV and awful pop music and all the shit that most of us don't really like, yet somehow there's a massive amount of people who love that shit. All right? And that's what YouTube has become. Complete and utter dog shit. But it needs to end. I mean, she, she got cake. So, you know, it is what it is. I, I get it. <laughs> that girl got cake. So, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the snout was attracted to it. God damn, that is quite the bite, though. I ain't gonna front. Oh, boy. Nice view, though. So that's the first thing I would do. Change our corporate philosophy. We're not doing this shit anymore. It's obviously not working considering we've lost the vast majority of our advertisers and the people who want to do YouTube for a living can't do it anymore because we lost so much goddamn money. We're idiots. So let's just cut the bullshit and start over. Okay? First off and foremost, the, like I said, the restructure to restart the infrastructure, would it would take years. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand, Phil, when they started it, no one thought it was going to be what it ended up becoming. Two... No one ever starts YouTube thinking that they were going to make it into a job. Just because some lame like your ass, like yourself, I should say, brought his lazy ass to the platform and got lucky, your words, not mine, though I agree, is one thing. But YouTube and Twitch are not here for you to make a living off of. It's neither platform was ever meant for that. So this whole sense of entitlement that more and more people seem to be having is very misplaced. That's why someone can talk shit on the little on their stream one minute and next minute they're on Twitter crying because they're banned for 30 days. I don't know. You can't get paid if you're not working. Last time I checked, 10% of nothing is still nothing. Just 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 saying. Why am I toxic? More toxic, more toxic, over dramatic, drama queen toxic. It's that simple. Um, but they won't do that. I guarantee you they won't do that, okay? Um they're not. They're not going to do that. Instead, they're going to just keep writing more algorithms and trying to put band-aids on problems until finally someone else steps up and takes over or until the whole website implodes on itself, which could happen. You know, it could happen. Article 13 is right around the corner, and if that thing passes in its current form, pff, forget it. The entire European Union is gone from YouTube. So good luck now surviving. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, we're, there's a lot of things that could kill it. Well, and they could just do like you do and beg kids for money and talk about their impending taxes and their dead parents. Sorry, dying parents. They could just do what you do and then run over the Twitch and suck off the admin there for security and safety. They could do that. Just saying, I mean, <clears throat> don't, don't let being on your knees keep you from having an income, right, Phil? It could definitely happen, man. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But that's at least what I would change. Uh, Android Cheer. And he says... I agree YouTube is trash, but even if they fix things, I don't think it would help your channel. I think the days of Let's Plays on YouTube are long gone. People just don't want to sit and watch content that long these days. No, and I hear you. Like, Android, I'm certainly not saying that, oh, we could fix YouTube and I'm, I'm going to come back to being prominent. No, I'll be honest. I don't think so. I think on Twitch, I have big potential. I eBay, right? <laughs> <laughs> I got big potential on Twitch. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, hold up. Okay, he, he playing. He playing. Okay, I got big potential on Twitch. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and dissect this. Okay, now the bacon's almost the bacon's almost almost ready. It, it, it's it's crackling, but it's not it's not done yet. I have big potential on Twitch. I've never seen you promoted on Twitch. I've never seen you make it on their front page. I've seen you pick games, right, knowing that you were going to be the top guy on. And still not be able to be the top guy because there's always one or two people that are dedicated to some game that nobody plays or no one's ever heard of. You're, you won't collab with anybody. You won't try to at least bring your channel on Twitch itself up to code, which is what I was thinking about with that restaurant store. Um, the bring it up to code. To bring it up to standard, you got this outdated fucking, uh, fucking stream layout. You have this outdated fucking stream chat. You ban everybody who has something to say about you. Talking about, oh, they came in and insulted me. <laughs> no, you're never going to grow on Twitch. 
ever. If anything else, just so you could stay on the platform, Twitch owes you nothing. So essentially, the only way you could get bigger on YouTube or on Twitch, sorry, is on your own. And you're someone who's been on the platform on YouTube for like 10 years and couldn't grow. You know what I'm saying? You still have never made it to 200,000 subs. You were never, you're probably, you're, you're never going to see five and you'll never see a million. You've stifled your own growth out of laziness, out of convenience and out of being complacent. And you think you have, you have potential to grow on Twitch? How? You can barely hold on to 500 subs at any given time. You're the one who sits there and is praying for miracles, hoping that some random big ass whale comes in and gives you a shitload of money. So you can pay your taxes and be able to keep yourself from going uh, from over being overdrafted. How are you going to have like all these opportunities to grow on Twitch when you are a perpetual failure yourself? You're some you're you're basically this lame that doesn't ever leave his house and has the nerve to dictate terms and tell people how the world works when you yourself can't even tell me how your neighborhood functions. Tell me what your life's like. But you can grow on Twitch. You have you have potential. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some 20 year old that can. <laughs> there's some 20 year old in Europe who's about to go ahead and play Dance Dance Revolution is about to go ahead and make herself a whole lot of. She's gonna provide a whole lot of growth to a whole lot of young men that are gonna be watching her, and there's gonna be a whole lot of opportunities for her to get subbed. Oh, uh, sorry, get subs and then eventually get partnered. But that's not you. I mean, you could install a pole and have Cat dance from it, then, then we'll see. But outside of that, what are you going to do? Which is funny, actually, and real quick, is that uh, this is the same idiot who basically was like, oh, well, you know, Cat probably is going to stream. She might make YouTube videos. We'll see. Then she won't because, oh, I can't, I can't run a line <laughs> from the modem that I have in my room <clears throat> to Panda's office. Sorry, to Cat's office. You know, I can't do that, man. I need as much bandwidth as possible. Yet, he has complete and total dead air. But when you look at all of Kat's old videos on YouTube, she was obviously very interactive with the game or with the chat or whatever it was, the, cir the circumstance. Way more than you. Not to say that she still wasn't boring, but she was less boring than you are. But yet, you see all this potential for growth. What you should do, Phil, is you should go ahead. <laughs> Here I go giving you advice again. What you should do, Phil, is you should start a stream one day and really it just be Cat. You're not even there. Let Cat do the pre-stream. Go ahead and write out whatever it is. Scribble out everything you need her to say, which you're not going to say anything about begging because you never really talk about money around her. Wink, wink. So go ahead and have her do a little bit of a pre-stream just to introduce herself and let her know what the situation is and then let her play like two or three games throughout that first stream. I wonder what viewership would look like if you did it that way. And since it's a surprise, we don't have to worry about any buildup. You don't have to worry about the trolls mobilizing and all that bullshit. We're going to have to work off the cuff. Literally, we're just going to have to speed the bacon process up. And you really can't do that because if you try to speed cook bacon, it's going to burn. So the chances of her getting massively trolled is unlikely. I don't know, Phil. It might, it might be a nice change of pace. But we all know you're just this insecure insecure individual who could never let that happen. If the focus isn't on me, why the fuck are you guys here? Imagine that. DSP News? Constantly asking your viewers and your fans for contribution. But on YouTube, I don't. I think on YouTube, those days are done because you, the YouTube viewers at this point have now been, through, through the automation, that pushed a certain kind of content down their throats for years. Okay? So I'm not even necessarily saying... That is the YouTube viewer's fault, but they have now been inundated with the same kind of immature, garbage, dog shit of content for like four or five straight years. So that's all that's going to be shown to you. That's what you're going to expect. You're right. The people who watch videos on YouTube, for the most part, the common viewer has no attention span whatsoever. They don't want to sit and watch an extended long video anymore. They just want to watch a little digestible snippet. The most popular people on YouTube are people who release 8 to 10 minute clips a day. Some kind of a montage of something funny or some kind of a new... Now, here's the thing. Uh, for any of you guys who have been paying attention up to this point. That he is slowly but surely trying to get himself back to the 10 minute uh, situation. He, he doesn't like the longer videos. He hates it. 
he would rather do more needless work and have his guaranteed little ad click at the beginning of all of his videos than to man up, put in the real time, which not that it requires any real time because he doesn't edit or anything anymore, and then be able to put like 20 ad rolls on his regular playthrough. That's what we've come down to now. Oh, me putting a single video out with like 15 or 20 ad rolls, that's not working. I want to go back to the 10 minute thing. He really does. He just hasn't done it yet because he's scared of the backlash. But that's really what he's working his way up to. He's slowly but surely trying to agglomerate uh, everybody into thinking that. But like, you know what, man, Phil? Maybe you should just go back to the 10-minute videos, man. Or 20-minute. Maybe you should do that. Yeah, Phil. You know, because you're really in a bad place right now. You probably should do it. We all saw how it... it the Currently, how he's doing it can work. We saw, it how, we saw what happened with KO Gaming. At least for the two weeks or three weeks or whatever it was. Before he went ahead and shut down the comments on that because he's a bitch. Now he's going to go ahead and continue to push DSP Gaming back down into the dumps. He's kind of slowly working himself back into the algorithm. But now he wants to go back to the 10 minute videos and kill it all off. But I have a theory. That was the whole point. That was the whole reason why he agreed to do the hour long videos in the first place. Or at least that's one of the reasons. So he could get himself back in good standings in the algorithm. Because despite the fact that he doesn't have likes or dislikes enabled and he doesn't have comments he does have theoretically the links of the length of the video and that so retention basically as long as he can keep viewer engagement and retention he's theoretically okay theoretically but like i said if you don't have comments and you don't have likes and dislikes you're kind of dead in the water he's just treading water but he's okay with that so what he's trying to do is build himself back up in the algorithm and then go right back to the 10 minute videos again and thinks he's going to actually He's going to, you know, he's going to be great. He thinks he'll be in a better position. But then, how? All it takes is a couple of channels. All it takes is a couple of channels to post like three days a week. On top of everybody who posts now. And that immediately pushes him back down further and further in the algorithm. Because there, there are channels out there that will out-prioritize him. Easy. Someone like Rich, for example, in his video, pushed Phil push Phil down at least for a week. So just imagine if you had a channel that was smaller than Rich who was willing to put up three or four videos. Now imagine that times four. You see the problem there? Eh. We'll see. <laughs> TSP News. News clip, clip and talk about the news. They commentate over the news or a 10-minute drama video about something. Or rumors, drama. Ooh, that's the popular stuff on YouTube. Stuff that sadly takes no fucking effort whatsoever. I'll be real honest with everyone. Just making an edited YouTube video is very easy. Doing live improv reactionary commentary is tough. The hard shit is sitting here playing the raw games. That's the hard part. Streaming is way harder than just editing videos for YouTube. Okay, it is. Real talk has no actual quality, that's what's popular, because that's what they've turned their viewing audience into by pushing that stuff to the forefront with their algorithms. So someone like me, who actually puts out, you know, long-form content, archives of my daily live streams on Twitch, I don't think YouTube is ever going to equate to anything very productive for me in the future. Alright, I'm just being honest. Even, I, th I honestly thought that by going from 10-minute videos, which is what I used to do, 10 to 15 to 20-minute videos, and going to like hour-long videos, which I now do, um, I actually thought that that would help. And in some ways it has, my engagement has gone up and my overall subs, subscriptions, go up. In fact, you know, maybe this year, maybe next year, I'll finally hit 200,000 subs on YouTube. <laughs> Hell no, no. <laughs> no. It's, it's like an inevitability now. It's... It's going to happen because every day I'm getting positive subs. Like, every day I'm gaining subs. So it's just going to happen at some point. Which is What's a positive sub? Like, explain that one to me. What's a positive sub? Is a positive sub someone who subs to you, Phil, and then goes to your Twitch and gives you money? Because if that was the case, you'd make more money daily. Instead of you holding, you know, a three or four hour stream and only making like 40 bucks. And 30 of that came from one, other, from one person. Is that what a positive sub is? Just saying, I, I, I'm just trying to get some understanding. Is that person, <clears throat> is that positive sub, are they like helping you on pay me tons? I mean, Patreon, sorry. My bad. Are they helping you over there? What's what's going on with that? 
Are they running view bots for you on YouTube so you can get that sweet, sweet declining ad revenue? I don't know. I just thought I'd ask. Good, because it didn't used to be like that. It'd be like, I gain subs, then I lose a ton. Then I gain subs, then I lose a ton. Um, but that's not happening anymore. <clears throat> but, you know, for me to have any kind of progress, I, I don't think it could happen with my video, my video type anymore, you know? Um... I was hoping it would. I was hoping that, oh, these longer form videos, my, my, my engagement, my viewer engagement will go up. And maybe within like a year, I'll see my channel get put back into those good rankings again. First off, he's lying as shit. <laughs> he's lying all day. He had been bitching about having to, uh, he's literally been bitching about having to do this since he did it. From the moment he's, from the moment before he actually put it up longer videos till the time he did it. And even afterwards, he's been complaining about it. Because yet again, Phil's in that uh, in that mind space where I would rather have the quick money, quick money, quick money. He doesn't give a shit about engagement. He doesn't give a shit about any of those things. He just wants his quick money right then and there. You know what I'm saying? Just like with Cat, he doesn't really give a damn about what she makes as long as it's mildly hot and it's in front of him. That's it. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't he doesn't he doesn't care much about anything else outside of that. So, trust me, he's been bitching about this for a long time. And maybe I can actually show up in related videos again or, you know, for top gameplay videos. Nope. Nope. You know, and if any <laughs> top gameplay videos. Here's another thing too, Phil. That all of those categories that they used to have back in your day that I guess meant something, whatever, that's all been done away with anyway. You're never gonna end up like your your video's never gonna end up making it up there with some of the bigger guys, unless you make a negative video. Unless you make a video where you're literally ripping the goddamn thing apart. Outside of that, no. Your positive content doesn't mean a goddamn thing. Literally, it's useless. It's worthless. <clears throat> so unless you side the spicy, spicing up the, the content, you're not going anywhere. I mean, it is what it is. You're not, like say, you put out I mean, you can say it's consistent. He can you consistently put out shit. So we have a problem, right? You you it's consistent, but it's shit. So what good is it? It's like showing up to work every day on time, but you do a really shitty job. Then what's the point of you showing up to work if you're not going to actually do anything productive? It seems like it's kind of just wasting wasting everybody's time to be honest with you at that point. Eh. But, but it's not like you know anything about work, right, Phil? It's not like you have to leave the house, right, Phil? Of course, Phil. The longer videos actually have hurt my YouTube channel because now my viewership is down. I don't mean that less people watch. I mean that I have less views overall. And so now it looks like, oh, look, Phil's channel tanked. In reality, all that happened is I put out less videos, so of course I have less views. But for some reason, people are judging, oh, Phil's channel tanked because his views went down. And that's not really what happened. So I make longer videos. You know, I used to put out four or five videos. But your now. videos were gonna. But your video, your views were gonna go down regardless because they've been going down anyway. You putting up five videos that are an hour long compared to you putting up twenty videos that are ten minutes long. There's a difference between the two because let's be honest with you, Phil. Out of the twenty videos that you put up that are ten minutes long, how many of those videos are being watched? Just saying, how many of those videos are being watched? How is one person literally watching all 20 of your videos every day? Whereas you have a better chance, you have a much brighter opportunity to put out five videos, well, put out four videos, four videos that are an hour long and someone actually possibly watching two of them, maybe three, with all of the ad rolls that you have in there. Your probability is higher the way you're doing it. The problem is, is the money isn't coming in as quickly as as you wanted to. But since you're not with an MCN anymore, right? And ads for you are probably going to be shit either way. You're probably just going to hurt yourself even more. You're building up all of this, uh, in your words, positive uh, karma, if you will, with YouTube as it pertains to going to longer videos. But you're going to piss all of that away just to go back to the same shit that ended up getting you to where you were in the first place. The moment you go back to, to, um, to shorter videos, in more videos, watch that sub count tank and watch your overall viewership tank too. Cause not everybody's going to do it. People have been telling you that for years. Stop putting out all these videos. We're not, we can't watch all of them, but you wanted to do what you wanted. And now you're about to go ahead and fuck up. Anyway, YouTube is never going to get good for you. 
So unless you make a real effort on Twitch, which is supposed to be the point of all this, because YouTube's an archive, so what do you care if you're putting up longer videos or shorter videos? It's an archive. What the fuck you give a shit? If you don't start really paying attention to Twitch, which you won't, then you're just going to fail anyway. And please fail. Please, just go ahead and fail. It's just it's so much... It's, just, it's way, way more entertaining to watch that than, to you actually, than see you actually try and fall on your face. Just... Come on, Phil. Keep it easy. Keep it lazy. Don't don't try. Remember? Don't try. Try. Why put effort into anything? That's for suckers. That's for suckers. Go in. Keep it easy. Keep it bland. Dead air all day. Couple snorts and ban people. There you go. That's the formula. And stick to that. And everybody who reaches out to you, everybody who sees that, hey, maybe there's an opportunity for this guy, shit on them all day. And be like, nah, fuck you. I don't need you. Why would I want to collab with you? Do that. That's 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 the ticket. DSP News. We're not about one. So yeah, when I decrease the amount of videos by you know five hundred percent, obviously the overall views go down, right? I know that YouTube is a sinking ship. There's no way I could get DSP Gaming to grow. It's done. Even if I were to change the formula of what I do on DSP Gaming to be longer videos, edited videos, nothing's gonna work. I guess we'll see moving forward what happens with the YouTube channel, but you're right, I don't think it's, anything's going to really turn around for that. Twitch, however, focusing on this Twitch channel, making this Twitch, Twitch channel better. By the way, <clears throat> just recently, I hit a new milestone. I can't remember what it was. Was it 7 million total views here? I think it was 7 million total views. I think I'm pushing 70,000 followers, and I just hit 7 mil million total views or something like that. This channel has potential, man. It does. But we got to see how <laughs> Now, this is what I was saying a little while back about it uh, uh, for Phil, a win's a win. So you got, you have this large amount of views, right? And uh, you have this milestone with following followers, right? Keep in mind, all of those are dead followers. Those are all people that he's banned. A lot of the viewership he has are trolls and haters, not your actual fan base, but he'll take, and he knows this, but he'll take that and skew it to make it, to make it look like, Hey guys, I'm actually getting popular. <laughs> that's what we've come down to now we're going to try to use the trolls and the haters who come to his channel daily and use the fruit of their labor to try to present himself as if he's successful yet when you actually go to one of his streams if he isn't bitching about money if he isn't getting ready to ban somebody or if he isn't crying about how <laughs> he, uh, he's his, uh, he's about to get overdrafted or his parents dying or whatever dumbass excuse that comes in in his head it's a bunch of dead air or it's a bunch of looking at the chat and hoping that they'll handhold him through it. But that's growth, though. That's positive growth on Twitch. That right there is being the modern, the modern everyday streamer now. Fuck Dr. Disrespect and Shroud and the rest of those other losers. Phil's it. He's the man. He's the ticket. Big ticket. You know what I'm saying? He did Tevin and the rest of them dudes a favor. You know what I'm saying? Shit. They weren't going to be able to compete with this. Not at all. Especially not Tevin. You know how much effort Tevin puts in? He sat there and streams on three goddamn fucking, on uh, three different platforms. Tries his best to bring the best quality possible. Psh, that's for suckers. Suckers don't do all that shit. You go ahead, you put, you go ahead and work off your fucking seven-year-old laptop that you've never updated. Fuck the drivers. What the, fuck, what the fuck's a driver? What the fuck is an update? Man, I got settings that I need to keep in place. And you go ahead and go off that. Then when your mic cuts out, then you go ahead and cry and complain about how the technology fucking failed on you. Imagine that. Let's go. All right. Genetic Gamer Charity is a streaming site called Stream.me shut down. They had zero regulation and allowed anything and got shut down. It's actually funny you mentioned that because a year ago, if you guys remember, I had some problems here on Twitch. I basically, through doing a few things, violated some rules on Twitch and they, they suspended me a couple times. And when that happened, I got a ton of messages from people on Stream.me saying, Oh, you got to come over here. It's great. There's no problems here. You know, you can stream wherever. You can stream wherever you want. But no one's going to bother you about you violated a, a rule or whatever and all that. And the first thing I said, or said when I heard that was, that doesn't sound right to me. That sounds like something that cannot last. That sounds like something that eventually is going to get into big trouble. Um, and I probably would never want to do anything like that. I don't know. There, there was, what, what did they have over there at the time? They had like a weekly bounty and whatnot, which was like 100 or sorry, it was like $650, something like that. I don't know. You might have to ask Tevin or somebody. Who might know about that? Um, but it was like six hundred and fifty bucks, something along those lines. I know Ralph and Medicare were basically fighting over that towards the end. Uh, <laughs> not physically, of course. I mean, I'm just saying. But um, Phil probably could have had that.
just off the trollers and off the trolls, sorry, trollers, off the trolls and haters and shit, he probably could have hit that $600 bounty a week, every week consistently. No problem. Hmm. Oh, well. I mean, it is what it is. But he could have done that for a little while. It would have been like Blip TV all over again, though. You know, I'd give him a couple months and he'd been gone. Doesn't sound like something that would make sense. Then I found out the reason that people were trying to get me over there, all right, was apparently because that website has a bounty system where if you can convince someone to sign up and they become popular, you get a cut of stuff, like you get a cut of the money or something. And I was like, well, there you go. You know, that's it. That's now, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, here's another uh, a, a fundamental foundation when it comes to business. Like, you see, you kind of got to spend money to make money and you, and no one's going to really do anything for free. Like if you get into a business relationship. Yeah. So you, you, there's, there's some compromising here or there, but Phil doesn't, but Phil has never kind of been about that life with John. Yeah. But even then John still wasn't getting what he was worth. He was only getting, he threw out, a threw out an amount and Phil was comfortable with it because of the amount he was making. He was fucking John over from the hop off that money type situation. Don't let anybody tell you different. But uh, Phil has never been one to be like about compensating people. He's never been one to do that because why would he? Oh, it's my content. I'm the one I'm the one that's doing all the work. I'm the draw. Think about back when uh what was it? Was that Spawn Seats? I think it was. Whichever one of the the chair companies that was actually legitimate. Look at the, the bitching and complaining he made about that when they dropped him. Oh, but I had already done this work and I had already added it into my ad rolls and shit like that. And they fucked me. What? <laughs> they saw that you were a toxic individual and they dropped you. But yet he was still bitching and complaining like he wanted to be compensated for the few hours that he actually was promoting them. Fuck all that. You threw out a couple of tweets and you threw that shit into your little ad roll. Big deal. That ain't shit under reasonable circumstances. So they don't owe you nothing. But f that's just kind of Phil's mindset. And this guy is the one that's supposed to have a business degree. But yet, since, you know, he doesn't have any real book smarts or street smarts, he has no idea the give or take in a relationship, in a business relationship, in a personal one, in a friendship, none of that. He has to always come out on top and profit. No one else. Everybody else is there to benefit him, which is... The reason why he doesn't have any friends in the first place. DSP News. Makes sense. That's why people were so desperate. They basically had, like, this Ponzi scheme of the way you make money on stream.me is not actually streaming, but convincing others to stream on the site. Do you want to play the fucking game? So, as soon as I heard that, I was like, I'm not definitely not going to use that site. If any, you know, if ever... Uh, my relationship with Twitch were to go bad, which I hope it doesn't. I love Twitch. I want to stay on Twitch. I want to. I have a healthy relationship with them. I love Twitch. I want to stay on Twitch. I have a healthy relationship with Twitch. It's not a person. <laughs> this isn't a person. Oh shit! Wow, that's. I wasn't even expecting that part, but that's sad. <laughs> I love Twitch. I have a healthy relationship with Twitch. <laughs> What's healthy when they don't promote you? What's healthy when they don't do anything on their end to help you grow? Like, dude, <laughs> like, how does that work? I can name, like, I can name literally half a dozen, if not a dozen gamers who I see on the front page, and I've never seen you anywhere close at all, at all. I think the highest I've ever seen Phil be in any type of directive was when he was playing, like, I think when he was playing Street Fighter V, and that was a while ago. It was one of those random times that he was playing where he was actually pretty high up in the directory. Granted, people like Smug and some of the real heavy hitters weren't even streaming that night because if I remember correctly, that was a tournament weekend. To be perfectly honest with you. So that so, you know, from a solo standpoint, he was probably one of the highest uh, he was probably one of the highest people in the in the directory at that time when he was streaming. But that was it. Even then you still didn't make front page and you still weren't featured. So huh? How healthy is this relationship? This is sad. When, excuse me, when Twitch finally kicks him off, he's going to cry. He is going to cry. I guarantee it. Because in truth, it's all he really has anyway. Wow. That's kind of depressing now. 
and they appreciate what I do. Twitch loves me and my streams. Twitch is the future. You know, I love Twitch. If anything, the one thing I can definitely say, my hard work here on Twitch is paying off. At least the work I'm putting into Twitch is paying off and showing positive growth. That's the good news. And they're a very good website with a quote culture much in mind with my, my values and stuff. They've got rid of a lot of the bullshit on the, the website that, that I felt, you know, was not valid content creation. Now, here's and another problem, too. And you, you actually face this on YouTube sometimes. And, you've, and you face it in almost every community. This group of people who think that they can dictate what is valid content. Because the person who does it, either A, they're not familiar with, B, they just don't like, or C, doesn't fall into uh, the format of content the way they do it. Now, yet again, you're hearing that same shit from Phil, to be perfectly honest with you. Now, that's not the reason why he ended up getting them kicked off the site, but either which way, it's that type of mindset is the reason why people like Phil don't succeed. He may get over on people, but it's the reason why he doesn't succeed. No one really has the right to say, I don't like the way you're doing that, so I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure you don't get to, you don't get anywhere with it. No one has the right to do that to anybody at all. You know what I'm saying? And that's the problem. That's actually one of the fundamental problems now with some, I'm not going to say all, but some YouTubers, YouTubers and streamers, especially the big ones who believe that they can, that they know what valid content is. And so they'll do everything in their power not to do it. Let me give you an example. There was someone in the anime community who was talking about the Vic Mignogna situation. And he let something slip that I don't think he meant to, but he hasn't caught it. So that's the reason why the video never came down. He said that when he looks at his related channels, he sees, he actually goes and sees who these people are. And if he doesn't like their content, He'll purposely botch his own related, well, he'll reset his related channels so they don't, so they're pushed further and further down into the algorithm and whatnot. And he says he does this multiple times because in his words, I feel like that's not quality content and I don't want to see it. And if I don't want to see it, other people don't want to see it. Now that's fucking insane. Now, at first I was like, well, is that actually kind of how that works? And it kind of is. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole crash course on all of that because there's actually a few different ways of going about that. And there's a couple of different people who can be accused of that. Not in this community, per se. But not in this community, but just overall. But um, that's how he was doing it. Come to find out, there's a couple of people in the anime community that do that. Come to find out, there's probably a couple of people in the gaming community that does that too. Which means that there's probably a bunch of people who do it that way. Uh, one of many. Since when have we gotten to the point where we can dictate what another person does? Especially if they're just starting off. What happened to the, the concept of individuality? Of just taking someone at face value. If you don't like their content, just don't watch it. You know what I'm saying? If you don't like what I do, that's cool. I can give you a list of people who, are, who I think are great and you can watch them. It's no problem. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you'll come back later. Maybe you won't. But I'm not here, nor should anybody, be here to dictate what's good and what isn't. You don't like it, just don't watch it. You know what I'm saying? Or at least come back later on. It might get better. The thing is with YouTube is people are constantly shifting. They're, everybody's trying to kind of find their place. They're trying to find their thing. But listen to this asshole right here talking about pushing people off the site, which is funny because it's kind of the same thing that's going on with... Uh, oh... Oh, I don't know. There's a new female streamer that's pulling some bullshit right now. My bad. I can't think of what her name is. But uh, it's not really that important. But anyway, there's another female streamer that's doing some silly shit similar to Bad Bunny. But she's really like, you know what? I don't like some of these people's content, so if I can get them taken down, I will. She's out headhunting for other streamers who she thinks aren't very good so she can get them taken down. And I'm sure she's not the first. I'm sure there's plenty of people who do that. <laughs> what have we come down to with this? Is the money shortening up online it, like so bad to where we're literally cutting each other's throats to just get what little money that's out there? Is it that bad? Or do we really have people who think they can dictate what's good and what isn't? And Phil, of all people, shouldn't be able to do that. I mean, no one should, but Phil definitely shouldn't. 
He's he doesn't have any foot into anything. Literally, he's just dealing with the crumbs that are kind of thrown off of the table and that's happens to land next to him. He doesn't have any real footing. But Twitch let him kick three people off the site, allegedly. And uh well, we know Phil did it for sure. But he kicks three he, Phil somehow gets three people kicked off the site and all of a sudden he can dictate what's valid content. Alright. <laughs> TSP News. In the last year or so. Um but that being said, um, you know, if ever something were to go horribly wrong for some reason, and I would have to find an alternative to streaming, um, I don't think I'd be going to stream.me regardless because of that. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah, here you go. Rabbit Pineapple Stein says the biggest people on stream stream.me were they were there because they were already alienated by YouTube. Yeah, YouTube got rid of them. So then they the way it goes is this. If you want to stream, you stream on Twitch. If something goes wrong and you can't stream on Twitch, you go to YouTube. If something goes wrong on YouTube and you can't stream, you go to Hitbox. And if something goes wrong on Hitbox, you go to stream.me. And then stream.me goes out of business and you're fucked. That's not completely true. It's not completely true. Because there's a lot of people who started streaming on YouTube and never went to Twitch or tried to go to Twitch, but they couldn't get the audience to... They couldn't get their audience to migrate over. Or they didn't like the quality, like you, Phil. So they stayed on YouTube, to be honest. Hence the reason why YouTube was trying to... Desperately, by the way. But they were trying to get in and trying to pull off of Twitch's gimmick on how to get money and so on and so forth on their platform. So it's not like everybody got hit with the Ice Poseidon or Brinty or Ice Poseidon, Brittany Venti, or, you know, it, not everybody got hit like that. Not everybody. Some people just don't like the way Twitch is, is you know, goes down. Actually, case in point, what I just said earlier. You know what I'm saying? There's the type of hypocrisy that goes on over there that most people are just like, man, fuck it, I don't need to deal with that shit. You know what I'm saying? I'll just do it on YouTube, and it is what it is. And that, and on Twitch, it's funny because all these people can get banned for saying certain shit, reposting certain shit, or rebroadcasting certain shit, so on and so forth. Yet other people do whatever, and they don't care. There's a dude who I watch on um, on Twitch, for example, who all he does is stream anime all day. If I had pulled that shit on YouTube, actually, I could probably get away with that on YouTube, to be honest, because I couldn't... I mean, I don't monetize anyway, but I wouldn't be able to monetize it, but I would be straight. I would be cool with it. Um, or YouTube would be cool with it, I should say. But he does that shit on Twitch, and that definitely shouldn't be allowed, and he still gets away with it. And when I, Because he's partnered, and because people throw crazy money at him. Mm, well, anyway. Whatever. He must be one of the... He's one of the lucky few, in Phil's words. Then there's like, like five people who stream on Mixer. <laughs> Just being honest here. No one uses Mixer. So that being said, um, I don't ever want to leave Twitch. I love this place. I, I love hanging out here. You guys love me being on here. So hopefully I would never have to go over to anywhere else. Okay. The bottom line is Twitch is a bad business. Twitch is not a good place to put out quality content. It's and why hasn't anybody sent this to Twitch yet? Like, I'm really, really surprised no one has ever thought. Well, maybe people have. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like someone needs to see this. I mean, I'm sure one of these guys can pull their face out of whatever thoughts ass that they're messing with and, and watch this for a second. Eh, maybe not. No. You are constantly uh, nagged to advertise and or uh, push subs or product so that you can make money and you're, they'll make money. They'll get profit. Actually, I just thought about it. When Phil gets kicked off of Twitch, if that ever happens... You're going to hear the same speech all over again. At first, he's going to be crying and complaining. He'll be on Twitter and he'll be trying to suck off whoever he can. But then after that, when he comes to the acceptance aspect of it, he's going to be like, you know what, guys? I'm actually kind of relieved. You know what I mean? I, I really feel like I've, I learned a lot from Twitch and I can make it work here on YouTube. And that and I was hindered the whole time I was there, man. I was literally begging you guys to sub and to give me bits and to give me cheers and to give me tips. And Man, it was hurting my content and I felt like I just wasn't growing over there because I had to constantly be shilling for money. But now, but now guys, I'm in a better space now. Now I can actually, I can actually really focus on the content. I'm back here on YouTube. I'm back where I belong. I guarantee you that's that's the speech that's going to happen if he ever gets kicked off of Twitch. I guarantee it. Because there's no one else, there's nowhere else for him to go. There really isn't. From that, and that you get profit from that. They don't care about actual games. They don't care about what you put on your stream as long as this is coming into them. And I love it. I love doing this for a living. Genetic Gamer Cheers is the biggest problem with watching a YouTube channel is related to tractor videos. YouTube should allow the creator to decide if they want to be associated with that content, stopping the nonsense. I do agree with you that. 
if someone's on your own YouTube channel watching your content, you should be able to either enable or disable related videos, period. If you wanted to disable them, you should be able to. And yes, you should be able, if you like, say for example, I block a user, then their, their related videos should not show up in related videos on YouTube. Yet they do. Uh, shout out to Beard Tendies. Why yeah. would you... Mm. Okay, so think about that for a minute. If I block a user, all their videos get blocked too. Why would they do that? Why would YouTube purposely hinder themselves like that? That's stupid. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Like, now we're really starting to get in the hug box type shit. I guess that's what Twitch teaches you. But that's really starting to sound like some hug box shit right there. That's really what that sounds like. That's really silly and whatnot. It's really, really silly that anybody would even agree to those terms. That's just laughable at best. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. 300 bit cheer. I said, if you pass away, where would you hope your fans would go? Or would you say for them to watch the archives forever? Dude, if I'm passing away, um, I'm pretty sure that watching my content is not exactly on my mind anymore. You know what I mean? That would be an awful thing. <clears throat> but let me put it, let me rephrase it. If I were to ever go away and not make content anymore, first of all, I've got an over 10 year legacy. I like how he went ahead and skewed away from me dying. I'm immortal. I don't have to, I'm, I'm not worried about that. Did you not see my mutant powers when I grew the extra muscles in my back that went around my spine to make my back better? Death is beyond, is psh, Phil Brunel dying? Nah. He's already transitioned that. But I like how he skewed away from that question. It was like, oh, if I go away, you know what I'm saying? I still have this crazy archive. Don't talk about me dying. Because Phil's scared of dying, by the way. Don't talk about me dying. Just talk about me going away for a while. Or if I ever hit the lottery or whatever dumb shit he's begging, he's begging and pleading for. Don't ever talk about him dying. It scares him too much. For 10 years of my life, I've shared with all of you on a daily basis. That's an amazing thing. How many people can you say you can see my life of the last 10 years before your eyes, right? Not many. Then how is it that people are like brain dead idiots and they're stalkers and shit like that when 10 years of your life is on the internet, which is on YouTube? Seems a bit counterintuitive to call them that, isn't it? I don't know. It, 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 I don't know. I guess now that I really think about it, it does make so much sense to me that you really can't call people stalkers if... 10, if it, over a decade of your life is on YouTube. It, it just kind of sounds silly to think anything otherwise, actually. I wonder how Phil came up with that concept. Were you supposed to just, were you supposed to just look at the content and not see it? Hence the reason why you shouldn't be able to remember it? Hmm. Uh, next time I talk, next time I see Tevin on Twitter, I'm gonna have to ask him that. I wonder what Tevin thinks. Actually, I wonder what LSB thinks. I wonder what James the Lesser thinks. I wonder what Mighty D thinks. Eh, I'll have to bring that up on the uh, on the gentleman's podcast next time I'm on there. That's that just sounds silly now. <laughs> like, 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 think about that for just a minute, late minutes, ladies and gentlemen, oh, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, think about that for just a second. This man has the nerve to call people who do content on him or who call him out on his bullshit stalkers. Yet he has ten plus years of his life, if not more, on YouTube. He's talked about most of his deep, dark secrets. He's talked about the disdain for his parents. Just recently, people have found out, found parts of an Axe the King where he talks about his parents cheating on him, on each other. I had talked about that before. So, I got, I guess you could say that's kind of validation on my end. Not false validation like low to your God, but it's, it's validation. But you're the one who put all this stuff out there. It's really like he expected people to just look at the content just so he could get the quick ad you know, the quick ad money, and not actually see the content for what it is. Hmm. I don't know. I have to wait what you guys see what you guys think in the comment section. I kind of already come to my conclusion, but I need a second opinion. Maybe a third. Yeah, maybe. All right, let's continue. 2016, I accidentally streamed myself masturbating. And most people who did it only did like a video a day. While I was doing eight plus hours of sharing my life with all of you every single day. Um, it's been an amazing journey. Let's put it that way. Oh! It's a benefit. Oh! And, uh, where are we headed? That is disgusting. Disturbing. And look dis at this. Look at that dude's face. Like, look at this. Like, <laughs> he's supposed to represent the modern gamer on Twitch? Holy shit. 
I don't know if he's smiling or if he's eating shit. Like, it's hard to tell. Jesus Christ, Phil. Get some sun. Go outside, for God's sake. For real. Before that room becomes your tomb. Disgusting. If anything, if this were to ever end, at least you guys could relive that journey. As long as YouTube still exists, which who knows at this point, but as long as YouTube still exists, you could always go back and relive that journey, that 10 plus year journey that I had. You know, it was kind of an amazing thing. And, you know, at least I have that. I have my legacy. Now, if YouTube shuts down, pfft, what can you do? I mean, in reality, I, I have most of my videos archived. Do you really think I could ever re-upload all those videos somewhere else? Probably not. Um, at this point, it's be, it's become such a huge, uh, organic body of work that I don't think that transferring it anywhere else would even work. But, at the very least, you know, for now, that's what you guys can do. And, you know, it's funny because some people say, oh, I don't like the, the modern Phil. He's very different from old Phil. So go watch old Phil. Because there used to be people who, when I used to make videos on YouTube, literally used to come He doesn't and want you guys going to watch old Phil. <laughs> he really doesn't. He really doesn't want you to want you to watch old Phil. Because then it's just gonna give you guys more ammo to call him out on shit that he does now. Like for real. Like you don't like why would you tell them to do that, Phil? Like he's still trying to still trying to bleed those six and seven year old playthroughs to death, huh? As if they're not already in the grave already. But you gotta still gotta get it for everything it's worth, huh? That's that's sad. And that's one of the things that hinders him. Like, you gotta think over all the channels that he has on YouTube, yeah? He's, I think someone on Kiwi Farm said it, or um, they had someone at least try to calculate it. He has, what, some like 80,000 goddamn videos out? Like, that's insane. It's insane to have 80,000 goddamn videos. That's ridiculous. And it's so much content that either A, he's incredibly stupid that he's still making videos because if you have 80,000 videos on a platform, you theoretically, especially gameplay videos, if you want to call it that, he theoretically should be set for life. He theoretically should be sitting back and chilling and letting the money just come in. It should be that easy. But he ain't made a bunch of mistakes and all of his shit is outdated. Nobody in the modern era, as Phil likes to say it, would ever want to watch that. There's nothing there. There's nothing there of value. Eh. Say this. Phil, you put out too much content. You play too many games. There's no way we can watch all the videos and maintain a normal life. You put out eight to ten hours of content a day. How could we possibly watch it all? To which I would respond, don't. Pick and choose what you want to watch. Because I understand your life is more important than you being a fan of me. You know what I mean? Always look out for yourself first. You know, I always tell people, your life is the most important thing. There's hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of Was that before or after you tell them to go and die in a fire? Uh, just for clarification's sake, of course. Just, you know, just throwing that out there. Hours ...of content that you can go watch. It's archived on YouTube. That's fine to watch. You know what I mean? Um, that always gets me. I don't like how, what Phil's done now. Or I like Phil at this certain time period. So go watch for the four years of me that you liked out of the 11 now that I've got on the internet. You know what I mean? And then, of course, a thousand troll responses of negativity. He's greed. and Oh, it's Phil's greed. Oh, it's greed. Phil wants more. He always wants more. Android Charity says, Does it worry you with young people dying that your job requires sitting, which can negatively affect your health? Have you considered a standing desk and streaming standing up? I have a standing desk, and I love it. Um, at this point, no. At this point, taking the break that I do and walking around and being active during my breaks and having a full day a week where I do a lot of, you know, more strenuous physical activity is working. As I get older, more than likely I will have to take, like, for example, oh, no, on my break, I got to go for a walk. walk stop, 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 stop. Stop. <sighs> okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about this nonsense for a minute. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> as you know, Phil takes a piss or shit break. Uh, like, it's like once an hour, I guess, right? And then he gets like a three-hour break in between his first stream and his second stream. Obviously not enough time, though, to make a meal. You know, he can only make turkey burgers and hot dogs and uh, run out and get a DSP tries or something. He couldn't actually make himself baked chicken or something. Uh, well, fuck baked chicken. He's like, can't even make himself chicken because it's just, it would take too much time. He said it, his words, not mine. It would, it would take way too much time. Three hours, actually not even three hours, two hours is too long to make himself, an extra, uh, as he would say, an extravagant meal. 
Like, Panda was literally making him, you know, five-star course meals and shit. Like, she was really pulling out the big guns for him. Uh, whatever. This idiot right here has the nerve to say that on my break, I walk around my house and whatnot. And that's all the exercise I need. And then, and then, the one day off that him and Panda have together, sorry, the one day that him and Cat have together, they go around and basically go window shopping and buy shit. And that's his exercise for the week. That offsets, that's what's literally keeping diabetes at bay. Literally. Between his breaks every day, and then the one day a week that him and Kat go out walking around and shit, that's what's keeping off diabetes. That's what's, what's stabilizing his weight. Literally. I know. It's, it's, it's amazing. And then, don't forget the mutation he went through that strengthened his back. He grew... He grew, grew literally extra muscles that comfort his back now. So now his back is stronger, despite the fact that he, he said he was going to need surgery. And that's kind of the reason why he actually moved Panda away from her family, all the way from Connecticut to Seattle. Actually, I think she's from like Pennsylvania um, to Seattle. So she could basically take care of him while he was having the surgery. Well, the surgery never happened and he mutated and he, he grew basically extra back muscles. So, in theory, in theory, there's more spare ribs for everybody. There's something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. Cannibalism. Here, you know, get physical exercise in me to avoid things like blood clots and heart issues. For now, I'm all right. And in fact, the last year, I've dramatically changed my diet to be... Now, also, one thing you guys should remember is there's also, like, this mysterious chronic illness that he has that he hasn't told us about, his, uh, about yet either. So keep that in mind, too, when he says that he's fine and he's changing his diet and this, that, and the third, he's perfectly healthy. Don't forget the mystery ailment that he's been fighting for years that never has been spoken of up until recently. Much healthier. Just perfect example here. I don't eat fast food anymore. Maybe once a month, tops. Um, I don't eat greasy foods. You know, Cat usually makes healthy meals. Even when Cat and I go out and we happen to eat out every once in a while, I get healthier stuff. The Wendy's salad. I got a salad from Wendy's that when I ate it, I legitimately got sick to my stomach for about a day and couldn't stop shitting and puking. It was, it, it tasted Now, here's another thing, too. I, I think I might have posted it in Tevin's chat when he did the restream of it, but I don't remember. He's, Phil has had at least two Wendy's salads that I can remember. He had one at his condo. Right? And that's what the actual chili on the side. He said the chili was terrible. This, that, and the third. Should have gave it the wings. And then he had a second one when he was in Connecticut. When he was actually in, sorry. He had one in Connecticut at the condo. Like I said, the chili should have gave the wings. And he had another one in Seattle with Panda. And I remember this because I've made this joke before. And most people don't get the reference. That's okay. Basically what it was is he had a Wendy's like Southwest salad or whatever the case may be. And it came with barbecue sauce. And like a chipotle sauce. And this idiot was mad <laughs> that they gave him two different types of sauce. They gave him a sauce and a dressing and he got mad because he was like, one's going to overpower the other, but but it's supposed to come with the salad and now it's going to ruin the whole experience for me. This doesn't make any sense. I don't want to I don't want to do this because it's going to mess up the salad for me. But it comes with the salad. And he literally went on like a two or three minute rant. It's fucking hilarious. It's the funniest shit that I've ever seen. Because I've never heard someone get so complacent and complain so much about salad. And about the dressing that goes on it. And most people don't remember, may not remember it. But it's the funniest shit. I might actually do a video going over both of those. Just so you guys see what I'm talking about. That shit's hilarious. It's so sad to see a grown man complain <laughs> about dressing on his salad. And the sauce that came extra. Just use one or the other and shut the fuck up. Right? But I got sick as shit after eating the Wendy's salad. I will never get another fast food salad like that ever again. So, my body is actually feeling better at this point than it has probably in five years. Like, probably, you know, I'm feeling good at this point more so than in a long time. So, basically, all those healthy meals and convenient meals that Panda made you weren't shit? But all of a sudden, cat shows up, and now you're the you feel you feel better than you ever have in five years. That's kind of fucked up, being that you were wet panda for five years. That seems kind of shitty. Just just saying, just that seems kind of messed up. And that's a 
a good thing. Um, so I don't feel like I'm at any risk. You know what I mean? I, I have zero of the warning signs of things like, you know, I always look at what's the, the warning sign that maybe you're going to have a heart attack or you're going to have a stroke or I don't have any even nothing even close to that. So that's a good thing. Not to say that there couldn't still be some underlying. That's funny because didn't Amber Lynn lie about like certain problems that she had and she said that she was perfectly healthy, but she wasn't and then admitted later. I don't know. I have to ask Tevin about that. Praise be. I think I'm not aware of, but so far so good. You know what I mean? How's the gout, Phil? Oh my God! Here's oh, another one. Thing. How's the gout, the Phil? Wow. <laughs> another idiot. This is great. How's the gout? We just had a troll in the chat. Celebrate gout 100. So har har har. Phil had gout earlier this year, and he talked about it publicly because he talks about this stuff publicly. He shares it, right? He's not ashamed. He's not a one of these people who hides the personal shit about his life. He talks about it. But if you watch his videos talking about his life, you're a stalker. Just keep that in mind. And so I brought this up, and everyone knows that I had gout earlier this year. And I don't have it anymore. I haven't had it since... Shit, I'm trying to think the last flare-up was sometime during the summer. Then you still have gout. <laughs> you just haven't had a flare-up in a while. You know? You know? Because I changed my lifestyle. I don't drink as much. I'm not eating as much red meat. I'm a lot more healthy now. And because of that, I haven't had any issues with it. But they think it's, like, funny to bring that shit up. Look, another one. Fall gout. How is this funny? Like, what is funny about that? It's over. Like, it's so outdated. Find something else. <laughs> Android Cherries is... But, why, but how's that outdated, Phil? Because I can go out and get a juicy steak. I actually think I might want to do that now, actually. Smothered in onions, mushrooms. Ooh, steak butter. A nice baked potato. Oh, shit. I can go out and get a nice juicy burger whenever the fuck I feel like. I can go out and get ribs whenever I want. I can do... I can literally eat whatever I want. You can't do that, Phil. You can't have your, you know, your shellfish. You know, you can't have certain seafood, right? You know, you can't have any of that no more. Can't have no red meat, you know what I'm saying? You can't have the good stuff no more. That's why you eat turkey burgers and shit. You know? You you completely fucked your life up because you wanted to flaunt your wealth and do what you wanted to do. Now look at you. You're reduced to eating like an old man before you fully become an old man. Holy shit, that's sad. <laughs> but yet you have the nerve to get you have the nerve to get mad at people. Because they make fun of it. But you told them that you have gout. Like you told them this. It was you who <laughs> that took both of your hooves and grabbed your little leg. <laughs> you grabbed a little pig leg and was like, I have gout! <laughs> it was you who did that. No one told you to do that shit. You chose to do that. You chose to grab your to grab your gout ridden foot. <laughs> you chose to do that and talk about it, how swollen it was, and how you couldn't you could barely get up out of bed. You couldn't walk downstairs. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! I have to find that video. <laughs> find that video now i don't know if it's like a weekend preview it's not an ask the king it has to be like a weekend preview or some shit i've got to find that video <laughs> oh i need to find that video now i am compelled to do it because it was before i think it was before the soundproofing i think oh i need to find that video i need it dsp news earlier how lucky I was to have Emerald 7 gives such a huge amount, but even with that, I might not raise enough, so do you think he saved you from bankruptcy? Well, the bottom line is, again, I don't want to get into financials this, this this morning. I don't know what I owe. I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know how much I'm going to raise this month. Emerald 7, absolutely. What they contributed, number one, it helped the community, because for over a month there, we had so many people with Tier 3 subs, and it was just a big, vibrant feeling around December, January, when everyone was excited and everything. And it was awesome that he did that, because the way he did it, it gave to the community, while it also gave to me. And by the way, I should also say, it gave to Twitch. Twitch well, wait a second, how, didn't, how is that any different from what King Tut did? Except for the fact that he asked for it back and probably got it. But you still got to keep the cash. 
and everybody still, you know, had the benefits of gifted subs and whatnot. I don't know, man. I feel like you're taking way too much credit away from, from Tut. I feel that like it's unfair. I, I really feel that's unfair. I really feel like you're trying to bury him. I, I can't allow that. I have to make it my mission. I, I'm sorry. Just like how they think they may have found Cleopatra's, uh, they finally have found the resting place of Cleopatra and Mark Anthony, I have to continue to keep King Tut's memory alive. I, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to just make it my mission. I, I won't allow him to be, uh, be to be engulfed by the uh, the grease of gout. I just I can't allow it to happen. I'm sorry. I just, I just, I just can't. I have to make it my mission. I have to do it. Cut of all those subs, so it helped everyone. It was like a, a purely beneficial for everyone kind of a situation, and it was really nice because I mean that was insane at the cost of that to Emerald Seven, but it absolutely it helped me out. It's getting me through right now because right now I was in a tough situation, and now to get at least the taxes and see what you know, it's gonna help. It's a good start. Let's put it that way. Is it enough to even handle like half of what I owe? Probably not, but it was a good start. So, you know, it was much appreciated. Fuck you. You're a liar. Um, Kanji Monster did 100-bit cheers. His Twitch is mostly automated. It seems to work out fine for you. Robots are the future. Actually, that's not true at all, Kanji Monster. That's 100% false. Twitch is prominently run by a moderation team of humans. That's the truth of the matter. Is that, for example, all the time people false flag my, my Twitch channel. All the time. Phil did something that's against the rules. And what happens is that report goes into a queue, and a human, an actual human, human actually that is a very interesting theory that Snow Brunel throws out that my theory is that the pay pig pays a certain amount to twitch or twitch employees to ignore those reports and the reason why i find that to be interesting right um is oh yeah that's right he did insult ninja didn't he because that's when third eye the third went over there and, and dropped a, a donut well sorry they call it a dono a dono over there and let ninja know what was going on ninja was like fuck dsp <laughs> he didn't say that but you know that's what he was thinking um, I wonder if that's actually possible. I mean, I guess it is. Well, here, let me get to my initial point. The reason why this makes sense is because think about what Phil tried to tell the, uh, whoever the contact was at Curse. Remember that? When Curse was letting him go, even though he said it was mutual and all that bullshit. He was like, well, is it, is there a way that you guys could have possibly, possibly ignore, you know, ignore those reports on me, you know, and then this way you guys can, you know, save on the cost. Now, I had said early on that if Phil can't profit, no one does. But if the piggy's back is on the grill already, I could see Phil being like, hey, well, this is what curse now. Hey, curse, you know, whatever my current contract is, drop it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? This way I get to stay on and I can still monetize my content and you guys get a little bit more money off my end. You know what I'm saying? You can you, you just just go ahead and, and and cut a couple of slabs of uh of pork belly off of me as long as I can keep going. And Curse was like, uh, we don't do that. I wonder now. <sighs> well played, Snorper now. Well played. <laughs> no, but seriously, that's a good theory. Has to review that, and based on you know my archives and you know they have access to everything that I've done on stream as well. You know, it doesn't just go away phantomly. You know, it, it exists. They can still see what I've done on streams. You know, they can judge what what I do and what I don't. And the bottom line is, now, with all, even with all the false reports against me in the last year, Twitch has not once contacted me and said that anything is valid. So, But that doesn't make sense, though, because you've already been suspended once and you got an indefinite suspension. So, obviously, they're still keeping an eye on, out on you. It's just that I think there's so much material out there that they just can't go through all of it all. Sorry go through all of it all. They can't, they just can't go through all of it. And then if you add that to what Snorper Nell's saying, I mean, that kind of makes sense. That really, really does, actually. And Phil is just enough of a fucking slime ball to pull some shit off like that. Jesus Christ. Well, the piggy, uh, the piggy sloth is getting dirtier. Hope you guys have, uh, have something to shield yourself with. About that. You know, versus YouTube, on YouTube, half the time when you get reported for something, it is automated. It actually is automated, where you'll just get... They don't even give you the benefit of the doubt to have someone look at it. They just fuck your channel up. And it's fucked up in that regard, you know? Like, they don't care. It's run. It's literally run by robots. Until you get to an extenuating circumstance where, my god, my channel is completely destroyed because of automation. Can a human look at this? And then maybe they'll send someone to come try to fix it. You know? Oh yeah, Snorpinel's right. Because in 2000... 
at least once or twice in 2018. And I think in my rookie season, 2017, that's funny to say that. And, and then in 2017, there was at least two or three videos that year that came up missing on some bullshit. Oh, I'm actually kind of sad now that those videos... I never got a chance to go over those videos. <laughs> actually rather hurt. I should reach out to Snorper now. Make special broadcasts out of those. I really should reach out to Snorper now and see if they would let me do that. Hmm. I have ideas now. Take a look at what happened with me. With ads last year, last summer, where DSP Gaming lost advertisement rights for three weeks because of automation. And then finally, someone from Google AdSense, after three weeks of me prodding them in emails, looked at it and said, oh, this was a mistake and reversed the decision. But that's what I mean. Like, on Twitch, that's, like, the upfront work, you know? That's exactly what they do on Twitch. They have a human who takes a look at everything to make sure that everything is good rather than just, oh, punish. Punish first and then fix it later, which is YouTube's philosophy slash Google's philosophy. While on Twitch, it's, okay, give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's take a look. And then if we, vi we, we, we determine this is a violation, we'll take care of it. You know, and you know what? I hate to say it. Sometimes it results in, in people getting away with stuff. For example, there there was uh, a couple people over the years. Wait, who wait, before you go ahead and, and, and put the noose tightly around your neck. <laughs> so, Phil, that means that the the times that you were suspended were valid then. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't just a, a, a slip or anything. You fucked up. They someone reviewed it came to the conclusion that you fucked up, and now you're agreeing with it, right? Because that's kind of what it sounds like. I mean, outside of the usual sloshing and shit when it comes to you uh, you pandering the Twitch, you're admitting, though, that you did do wrong, and you were at fault for everything you did, and you deserve what you got, despite the fact that the, the punishments were reduced. Hmm. Okay, let's continue. Really nasty to me here on Twitch, who got away with it for a long time, and then finally... It took a human to finally review the case and looked at it and said, Oh my god, I can't believe we let this person get away with this egregious shit for as long as we did. And those people aren't on Twitch anymore, you know? Oh yes, 30 the 3rd. I'm sure that vaping during playing games would be great. Yeah, I want to look just like Tevin. I want to be vaping constantly. He's my idol, if you guys didn't know. The guy who literally spends his entire day copying and restreaming me, he's my idol. I wish I could be like him. I wish I didn't have to put out original gameplay content. Now, here's the thing. We're going into a whole lot of detail on what Tevin does, right? And, you know, and what he does on his... So on and so forth. We're going into a whole lot of detail of what Tevin does and how he conducts himself. From someone who doesn't watch his content. Just saying. Just keep that in mind. Phil doesn't... Doesn't... Doesn't get himself down in the mud. Uh, yeah. He doesn't get himself down in the mud and... and and, uh, and occupy spaces with the rest of us, you know, as brain dead idiots or whatnot. Yet he sure as hell knows a whole lot of what's going on. And he sure as hell regurgitates a lot of shit that's, that's said on this side of the, of the fence. Um, I don't know, Scooby. I don't know. Huh? Let's continue. Uh, you know, based on skill and talent, I wish that I could just ride on the coattails of other people, but I'm not good enough, I guess. Damn. Wait, though, but I thought, isn't it funny how he, Tevin has way more viewers, but you make way more money than him? And it's funny how your fans are better than his fans. And also, if he really would make so much money doing what you do, why doesn't he do it for a living? Why does Tevin have to have a job? While well, you get to sit there and stream on your ass for no reason. I don't know. Those may have been quotes that I may have made up. Maybe not. I'm, I'm pretty confident I heard Phil say all those things. I could be wrong, though. I, I, I could have. I, I might have made that up. And, and I'd say that I had anything to do with those decisions. I didn't. It was actually other people flagging them for me. Because I don't deal with that. I just put out positive content, and if people do negative shit towards me, I ignore it, and I'm just focused on doing my own positive shit. It's that simple. But people watch my stuff and see these people doing negative things towards me and can't put up with it anymore, and they go and do these things, you know, to basically try to remedy the situation behind the scenes. I'm not even aware of it. And... How are you not aware of it? You just told us how it works! How are you gonna tell me you don't... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Shit happens... And other people go out and report it. I have nothing to do with that. Sorry, I'm 
clapping like <laughs> clapping like a chick that's about to go ahead and beat somebody up. Um, uh, there's sh shit happens. I don't have nothing to do with it. I concentrate on my own content. Other people get fed up with it, and on my behalf, they try to remedy the situation behind the scenes. But I have nothing to do with it at all. They do it on their own volition. Or I have other people do it. Why would you admit this? I mean, it's not like we already knew, so it's not like this is a big revelation. But yet again, why would you why would you say this? See, <clears throat> some people think it's bravado. Some people think it's ego. Some people think it's just a slip on his part. A mental slip. Oh, they actually have a word for that. It's a Floridian slip. Uh, they have a... You know what I'm saying? It's, it may be whatever. But this is what happens, ladies and gentlemen. When you put your life online, this is what happens when you become too comfortable and too com and too comfortable and too complacent doing what you do, and then get mad when people call you out on it later, and at the point at the point where you almost have to go back and and I implore people to do this, you have to go back and watch. The, the you have to go back and rewatch Snorp Brunel videos. You have to go back and watch Mighty D videos. You have to go back and rewatch Mr. Huff stuff videos. You have to do that because the 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 gems are in there. You've you you saw you were listening to it, and you may have even looked at it, but you didn't see it and you didn't hear it for what it was. That's why you have to backtrack sometimes. It's important that you do that. It, it, with, like I said, Snorp Brunel. Mighty D, Mr. Huff stuff. Those are three people that sometimes, like, if you got a weekend, just make yourself a playlist. Archon does that actually. Build yourself a playlist and just go back and kind of just binge and just kind of binge watch those things while you're doing something else or if you're just not doing anything because TV shit anyway. And you'd be surprised what you may have missed the first time around, but you'll catch it now. It's really, really important. And it's really important how he says it, in, in the context that he uses, how it's structured when he blurts it out. It's super important. All right, let's continue. <laughs> Twitch actually cares and cleans up their site. So, as much as you can't watch you say Twitch is automated, the, I tell you right now, it's about 4 million percent better than what YouTube does. There's enough human interaction that you can always get an answer. You can get someone involved to review a case. It's not like YouTube where you're talking to bots for three weeks before you can even get a human to look at something. Okay? Burn in hell, Brunel. And I'm going to burn in hell for the rest of eternity because of it. You can't change who you are, I guess. Hell is a place where it's very hot. There's, you know, it's torturous conditions. Fire, hail, brimstone, uh, you know, your, your body is being ripped apart by demons who are shoving red hot pokers up your rectum. Not a nice place. Okay. What pasta do you prefer? I prefer a penne. Oh! Easy to eat. Oh! Phil. Alright guys, let's stop it there. Um, it's been a while since I've done a news broadcast. Like an actual, like, you know what I'm saying, back... To like what how I used to do things and uh, I still don't have I still don't have the classic uh, overlay yet so like I say give, give me a little bit of time and things will go back to normal uh, fucking hey man I miss looking at it god damn it um as it pertains to this situation shouts out to SSP I hope I hope she's doing well um as it pertains to this situation though so Phil has finally come out the closet and admitted that he was behind the whole situation, which we already knew that. And uh, apparently the uh, the pigs of gout are out there doing their thing. But the thing is, though, is it has to work in the reverse. Like, if he can flex, because he, well, here, let me, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Here's how I'm thinking the situation worked out. So Phil has his minions mass flag people. And then he comes in later for the coup de gras. That's my general thought on how that works out. Because at the end of the day, just to get flagged over and over and over again is, only, is not going to get you very far. Phil himself says that. Now, granted, Phil's a liar, so you got to keep things in mind. Then again, the guy who he was making fun of because of the hair, isn't that dude like a partner also? So theoretically, 
having a bunch of people flagging is one thing, but if you can get another partner to flag another partner and you can have the proof behind it on what the situation was, it would hold more muscle. I'm not saying that the dude with the blue hair that Phil made fun of flagged him. I'm just saying I can understand how the situation and how it's structured over there would help. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is Phil, that has to work in the reverse. I mean, to be honest with you, if you get flagged, false flagged, on the regular, then after a while, something has to stick. So now that goes back to what Snorpernell said, where it's possible that you're throwing money at somebody or you're, give, you're giving a much bigger cut of what you bring in to Twitch so they allow you to stay on, which is rather pathetic to say the very least. I don't know, Phil. We didn't, we didn't open up a whole new piggy hole and whatnot, and this might be interesting to kind of look through later on down the line. It's a good thing I do older videos. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm late sometimes. Sometimes you just miss shit. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I know this was this was a bit uh this was a bit long, but I haven't done this in a while. And uh, given the uh, situation with the uh, last project, which hurts me greatly, um, it's also a bit of a wake up call too. So that kind of worked out. Um, <clears throat> sometimes you uh. It was a bit of a wake-up call. Either which way. Um, so, you know, this this can't make up for that because even in my own mind, it doesn't make up for it. But it's it's something to kind of try to start your week off uh, hopefully strong. Uh, the Wing Report will be coming out later on. And like I said, I got a backlog of videos. Plus, like I said, I was able to get the older videos that, um, that retrieved off the laptop, which that is great. Um, probably going to have a hiatus coming up, though. So I'm not sure if I'm going to pocket those or I'll just mash record. I'll just do like a binge recording session. So I have something for you guys while I'm gone. I'm not sure yet. But um, expect some videos though, definitely this week. I'm, I'm feeling good this week uh, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, it's important. It's important. And that, and like I said, the, the first episode of the Wings Report should come out this week. So that should be cool. I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to hit yet. More than likely, we're going to clown about that Mustang shit. Because <laughs> that's always great. And then um, eventually we're going to get into the whole weight loss controversy because I've got some I've got some goodies for you guys on that for some of you who may not be familiar with it. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot going on right now. Um, I hope you guys like it. That's all I can really say. Ladies and gentlemen, this is DSP News. Always late, never breaking. Unreliable coverage that you can't count on at GTG Network and Productions. I am your host, Slash Anchor GTG, and I'm signing off. It's been a pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. And to broadcast... Buggy stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this. <laughs>